Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. I thought I would do a quick uh, recap of some of the things that have come in the mail recently and then uh, ramble on a little bit about uh, a dilemma I'm kind of uh, facing right now. Maybe you have the same issue going on uh, with your collection. But uh, first the mail and I wanted to start off with a little baseball for my uh, baseball fans. I know I tend to uh, drift away from my vintage baseball videos and I've seen that I, I've lost a lot of viewers but I I apologize. I hope to, in the in the near term, get back to some vintage card uh, showcases. But for the time being, uh, the mail as it's come in, this 82 Donross George Brett. Uh, Brett was never a guy I did a lot of vintage collecting on. I've got a couple of his rookies and some a few early pieces, but not much from the 80s. But uh, definitely a great player. And uh, Kansas City was only about three hours from where I grew up. So pretty cool piece. Uh, a card I needed uh, for the Barry Larkin collection uh, had his Don Ross and Fleer, so now I finally have the tops. Just an Airman 8. Pretty clean looking 8 though. Uh, that wood grain 87 tops. Uh, Barry Larkin, a guy that doesn't get a lot of love, but he is a Hall of Famer. And rightfully so. Another Hall of Famer who does not get the love is this 89 Winfield. Really well centered. I mean, this is a clean card. You know, when someone sends in an 89 Tops Dave Winfield, I'm pretty sure they're expecting to get a Gem Mint 10. And it definitely has that kind of eye appeal. A little bit of a red dot, maybe that's what's holding it back. Uh, centering on the back, maybe just a little bit. But hey, I paid less than $2 and bundled it with that George Brett card, so I'm not going to complain. And I've got a nice little uh, Winfield collection, so here it is. Dave Winfield, late playing career, uh, 89 Tops. Let's talk a little bit of basketball. A lot in the news about uh, a ton of basketball cards that were graded in the month of June in PSA. Uh, so you've seen a, like a 90, 90 Fleer Jordan, 92 Tops Shaquille O'Neal, 96 Tops Kobe Bryant were three cards that had around 2,000 plus or near 2,000 cards graded just in the month of June, which is insane. Uh, Ray Allen, not as much. He still is not as popular as those three, obviously. So uh, I finally picked this up in a nine, had it in an eight, got it for a nine for an affordable prices as prices um, were down. So I figured I'd pick it up. Uh, here's another card. I, I talked about that 82, uh, excuse me, 92 Tops O'Neill. Here's a 92 Upper Deck International. Uh, less than 200 of these graded, and I still was able to pick it up for under $10. So very pleased with that and a uh, very low pop count as the uh, the market floods with the 92 tops. And it's just a matter of time. Yeah, you'll probably see those prices dropping. Maybe I'll pick one up. But right now, I feel they're still a little too high. Here's the uh, the luxury card or the high money card of the, of the order. This 96 finest with coating refractor. So I was able to pick up a Nash Bowman's Best refractor a few, a few maybe about a month and a half ago. And so I was able to get this refractor uh, on a, I don't know, buy it now. Somebody didn't pay the seller, and so the seller contacted me. Uh, I checked to make sure there wasn't some shill bidding going on. I verified, for the best of my ability, that it was legit. Somebody just didn't pay. The folks that were bidding right under me had a, a ton of feedback as well, positive. And so I, I, I kind of knew it wasn't, uh, you know, if you see this happen and you see somebody, you know, with like three or four uh, history of buys, and uh, they show bid you up multiple times, and then you, then you, then I'll, I'll be like, nope, oh, I think I'll just pass. But in this case, it was a fair price. Uh, it will seem legit. It came in, and the uh, the seller also included this card as well for free. This is 96 with coating Nash, a non refractor. And I tell you what, I was very pleased. Uh, sent a thank you note back to the seller. Very generous of them to include that. I mean, I just bought one of these uh, a month and a half ago for about 27 28 bucks, And uh, to get that in there for free was blown away by the generosity. So uh, some good people in the hobby. And I really appreciated that from the seller. Uh, here's the 96 top, Steve Nash. We'll probably see a lot more of these. Uh, Kobe Bryant, as I said, almost almost 2,000 of those graded in the month of June. You, I imagine those are coming down in a, uh, in a sharp way once all those start flooding the market. And that's just it. The people that are sending those in probably aren't collectors. They're more people invested in selling and they need to pay for those grading fees. So they're going to go on the market quick and uh, there's going to be some that are easily and ready available at affordable prices. So get ready. Get ready. If you've been waiting to buy a, a 96 Tops Kobe, I imagine your time is right around the corner. 
Another 96 tops, Kevin Garnett. This is the second card in the set of him. I think I got this in a probe sting auction. Just a little over, a little over uh, maybe 12 bucks. Paid a little bit more than I wanted to pay for it. I was bundling with some other cards, and then uh, the other card I really wanted uh, didn't come in. But uh, Probstein uh, issued a refund rather quickly because uh, it was double listed. And it happens, right? And uh, Probstein is very good about uh, making things right that were wrong. So uh, no issues with that. Here's a very low-end Ultra, second-year Garnett. It's a cool card, right? Uh, it's definitely a 7. The corners are a little dinged here, a little dinged there. So no, no issues with that. But a really cool card. I like the refractor uh, name plate on that 80, 96 Ultra. And that is green, kind of matches the, the color of the uniform. Yep, low end uh, Garnet edition. Uh, I showed this card in another video when I was comparing it to a couple CSG cards I'd ordered. But uh, I was able to get this Ionix for under 10 bucks. Any PSA 8 Michael Jordan from his playing years under $10 is definitely a steal. So I was really pleased with that. And Ionix, super fan of it. Not the most popular set, but it is a uh, a near peer competitor to Chrome. At least that was the intent of Upper Deck back in '98. Last a basketball card. Uh, this '98 Topps Chrome Paul Pierce, my second one of these. A really clean card and it looks good in that Lighthouse holder. Price point, I think I paid around twenty six, twenty seven, bundled with another card. Ultimately, I think Paul Pierce is a Hall of Famer, and uh, to get. One of his rookie chromes uh, for under 30 bucks in a nice PSA slab is is really a, a no-brainer situation. If you see him out there, pick it up. It's just a matter of time before this card gains uh, some steam, uh, as I believe it will in the future. Probably not a lot of them overly graded right now either. Uh, you can see back behind me, I've got uh, a little bit of a dilemma. I'm thinking about, you know, with the with the rise in interest in Shohei Otani, uh, justfully, you know, rightfully so, uh, I'm thinking about maybe selling some of my 2008 uh, unopened uh, blasters. I, I picked all these up uh, locally before the flipping days, you know. And, and 2018 is interesting because nobody was really flipping in 2018. Uh, the flippers didn't come around until really, was it uh, 2020, late 2019? So you don't really see a lot of flippers with a horde of, uh, you know, Topps Chrome 2008. These are actually going for you know, over $200 plus, dollars, around $200 maybe. And uh, I remember when I bought two of these boxes, I busted one. And I, I really kind of felt bad getting it because I'm like, do I really even want to buy this? I felt kind of obligated, you know, as a collector, you know, like I want to have a couple of them. I'm glad I kept the one, but I really, I'm not, you know, I don't think I have to have a Topps Chrome Blaster in my collection. Uh, I have another one of these updates, uh, so that's no skin off, off my teeth if if I let one of those go. The high hum, high numbers, uh, I like that because it's got a lot of good players, not just Shohei, but you got the Juan Soto and the Ronald Acuna, high number. Uh, Glaber, if he ever starts hitting again, high number as well. And then the Allen and Ginter doesn't have a Juan Soto in there, but it's got obviously Otani and Acuna and, uh, and Glaber in there as well. So really cool. I think these high number and the Ginter I got on discount at, at on like Walmart.com. And that's just like that. You you could buy this stuff readily all year long, and and this stuff might have even been in the bargain bin at the end of 2018 when they were coming out with 19 stuff to get rid of it. Uh, it's just funny how that's the stuff that becomes valuable, but the stuff that all the flippers are out there, you know, you know, fighting over and beating each other up in the parking lot. That's the stuff that long term may not have any value because they made so much of it, and um, it's just it's just the way it works. Uh, also went through some of my Otani cards, uh, pulled on them out because I really didn't have them set aside. I, you know, Otani was a guy that had a lot of promise, but I never really, uh, never collected them. But uh, some of the stuff that I'd pack pulled. Here's a uh, paper update from 2018. This is number one. Uh, I have, still have a couple of unopened boxes of this uh, Holiday Tops from 2018. Shohei's got a card in that. It's kind of cool because it shows him hitting where a lot of his cards are showing him pitching. And then uh, likewise here, uh, these are from the Chrome update. You could only get these uh, from uh, those exclusive Target Mega Boxes. And I uh, never never bought a box from Target. I was able to, uh, while I was deployed over in the Middle East, uh, bought uh, over a course of uh, several sessions, uh, purchased around 24 packs, loose packs. You know, And of those 24 packs, never once did I get an autograph, never once did I get a refractor. Uh, I believe probably because the packs were being weighed. So, I mean, that's what you expect. I, I knew I was getting them for a good price and that I would only get base. 
essentially from it. But there's a lot of good base stars in that set. Got a couple of Sotos, uh, one Acuna, and these three uh, Sheho, Shohei Otanis, two of the number ones. These are This is a real popular card. And then uh, his rookie debut, another popular card. But uh, still deciding on if I want to sell some of these. That's the debate, right? Yeah, is Shohei truly the next Babe Ruth? Or is he going to you know, lose value as he gets hurt again and then struggles and limps through a career? You just never know, right? You don't want to give up too early, but at the same time, the... Uh, the collector in me says, hey, get, at least get rid of one of them while the, while the getting's good. Uh, but that's just it. Uh, I don't know quite what I want to do with these yet. But uh, that's that's it for this time. Uh, once again, tell me uh, what you think. Huh? What would you do? Uh, would you sell or would you, would you hold? But uh, I appreciate your posts, your comments. I'll talk to everybody again soon.